Hey guys, and happy Sunday to you. I hope you have a good, good Sunday. I hope the week coming up is going to be really good for you guys too. Um, I put a scathing video out yesterday. Um, I meant every word I said. Uh, I want you all to know, even with the foulness I can put forward from my mouth, I love the Lord. He is my King of Kings, but I am not perfect. And I want to stress with especially the Christian community uh, that we need to make stands more often than we are. We need to be bold and strong. Uh, uh, most churches are teaching today the moment there's confrontation or you call somebody a name, which it could be anything, uh, that you've immediately crossed the line. And nothing could be further from the truth. I watched a video here recently. A uh, pastor, a real preacher, goes into one of those transvestite uh, strip teases in front of little children and, and tells that the, the guy dressed like a scantily dressed woman, you are dressed like a whore. And Christians get mad at this guy and defend the transvestite, which is defending ignorantly these things being shown in front of children and being promoted that it's okay. And we got to get away from that. You, you, you can't accept things like that. So I'm boisterous and sometimes words will come out of my mouth that uh, aren't pleasant, but I take nothing back in the video rant of the last video that I put out. I meant every single word I said, and I meant it in the forward way I said it. Uh, I don't... Uh, Coming to, I'm an old man, and coming to me thinking you're going to get dulces and sweets is not uh, what's going to work with me. And uh, I'm saying what everybody else, the older guys in the boxing community are thinking. They just are too <laughs> nervous to put it out as boldly as I am. For the ones that will even touch on it and be honest because they're worried about making money and they're going to offend somebody and say that's not how I roll. Uh, it's not how I roll at all. What you're going to get here is honest opinions and honest truths that are factual. And I don't make no apologies for that. I just simply don't, nor will I. Uh... If I have to make apologies later on in front of the King of Kings, trust me, I'll be down on my hands and knees begging for that for that forgiveness for my shortcomings. And I'd suggest you do the same. But if you're looking for perf perfectness, up around me is not where you're going to get it. So I want to try to say in a nicer way, though, what I was saying yesterday, boxing has turned into a defensive, almost solely defensive sport. And this is why boxing is awful today. Uh, I made some statements uh, about Tank Davis. He's a good puncher. He's a hard hitter. Uh, some of the fights, you go back and you look at all his fights, some of the fights he's not throwing punches till third, fourth, fifth round. He's waiting and setting back, trying to set something up constantly. And uh, he's going to run up on somebody that is, I'll say, aggressive like Rolly Romero, but sound, uh, which Rolly Romero is not a sound fighter at all. Uh, I respect Rolly in the part that, even though I think he's a weirdo, uh, and he is, he's a little weirdo, that's what he is, I'm not going to candy coat nothing, but at least the boy will come out and let his hands go, 
and we need to get more into uh, a offensive style of boxing. That's what everybody wants to see. You want to see it. I want to see it. Everybody wants to see it. Uh, I get kind of upset because I've got 30-something uh, year old trainer saying, well, your kid moves too much. He's moving too fast. And I'm like, where'd this come from? So I start checking them out and I see that, uh, you know, it's, you can read it like a book, but I go check and make sure and verify anyway, go look at these guys and, uh, they got good defensive minds. There's a lot of soundness going on with these young guys, but uh, a lot of stupidity as well. Everything is in conserving energy with these guys, and it's it's, it's antithesis. I mean, it's com the complete opposite of what we're doing. We want to last 15 championship rounds. 12th round ain't a championship round. You've just been told it is. 11th and 12th round, they're not championship rounds. Uh, just because they back 15 rounds up to 12 and they call it that, that doesn't make it true. Uh, there's men walking around saying that they can have babies. That doesn't make that true either. Everything seems like sports, religion, uh you just, history, science, everything's based on lies today. Everything mixed with a little bit of truth so that we soak it up. And I don't give out like that. I don't do that. We train for 15 rounds. We, we're in the works for something to last maybe about 90 seconds. I mean, that's it. Well, why do you train for 15 rounds then? So we can go 15 rounds. See? So if we move a little bit more than you think can be done for 15 rounds, you might want to think again. Because you, uh, as the video said uh, that I put out about last week, you guys have no idea what we're doing, and that means we're doing something right. We can sell a lot of information. I could go down the list. You know, I had a guy ask me again today. Didn't mean it offensively, and I love this man. This man is a great father. But he was like, when Joe has his first fight, and I'm like, you know, Joe's had 31 uh, fights. Joe has won 30 uh, by TKO or uh, in the first round or second round. Uh, and uh, a good portion of those fights, let me spell it out how it's, go, how, how it's going. Uh, we went into a tournament in the state of Caesar down here. Big, big thing. It's boxing uh, tournament side to it and a MMA uh, side to it, all in the same uh, arena. Big event. Joe get, goes in there, nails somebody, completely pulverizes them in 40 seconds, first round. Second two guys, uh, they don't show up. They forfeit, and he wins. So I count those as wins, too. So sue me if I'm wrong, and he's got, uh, I have to go back and look at it, I believe, nine forfeits. And a number may be a little higher, but I know it's a minimum of nine on uh, three backouts of three folks at three different places in two different states. See, we go to North Santander, same thing. Go up in there, a little bit different this time. Oh, that's that kid. No, my kid's ankle's messed up. And the other two just disappear. See, so when I tell you we're having a hard time even finding somebody, excuse me for being upset that sport's becoming unmanly. It's been that way for a while. That's why we got uh, people that hold one of the ten belts 
I'd, I'd each weight class walking around with a pocketbook or female sunglasses on trying to think it may look cool or putting a damn dress on. See, because they were feminized. And I'm about putting, putting down to it that uh, the biggest problem is promoters today. It's the biggest problem. It's the biggest thing. Uh, and trainers that will not kick their fighters in the ass and light the fire up underneath them to make them take their medicine. See? When Joe first started, I put him in the ring with a Venezuelan professional two or three times a week. I told that guy, whip, the, whip his ass. Whip Joe's ass. Don't kill him, but don't really be holding back on him. Let him have it for two two months. This is the second or third day I put cut him loose in the ring with that professional. I said, you lay it on, Joe. That's why the kid's tough. That's why he hits back. He's been through adversity at the beginning. Not somewhere working up to get in the middle somewhere. It's like it was when I first went to the gym. I was thrown in there and beat up. You go back to the 50s, Sonny Liston, uh, famous story with him, the real intimidator of the sport. Yeah, I was 13. I went into the boxing gym. I got a shellacking and I didn't go back. I didn't want no more of that. And that, see, that's the way it should be. He had to mature some. But just getting in here, patty cake, patty cake, and all this stuff, two guys having a gentleman's agreement to hug each other a minute and a half around and uh, then, then dance around each other the other minute and a half. And then another thing, a lot of you trainers, you don't know how we slip punches in a... a a bigger wave, we go down and then we come up with leverage. That's why we're so devastated. That's why he's the kid so devastating. He uses leverage. Every punch has uh, significance to it and meaning to it. Uh, uh, Joe doesn't even stick a left out to gauge the distance on somebody. He stands, steps up and gets on the inside. He moves forward, not backwards. He's not backing up two steps to engineer a way to move forward one step. It's not what we do. And I know a lot of you guys can't understand that. And that's okay. We don't really want you to understand it. We just really don't. It's not for you to understand. You've never seen anything like it. And you don't want to come up against it. Uh, these types of styles of uh, fighters that are coming up today. You don't want to have nothing to do with it because you don't know what you're doing. Instead of building a guy's body up to endure a rigorous 15 rounds of fighting, uh, you want your guy to move the distance of a boxing glove and think that's going to work. You know what we call that? Uh, that's a feint to us. Joe moves that much when, it, when he's fainting to try to fake you out. You, you use a feint as a slip because you oh, you got to conserve. We just go full blast dead on from the start to the finish. And like I said, you know, worst possible case scenario at 14, two minute rounds and uh, three rounds. He trains for 15, three minute rounds and he's going to continue to do so. If they move it back to 15 rounds, all of a sudden people want to become men again. And the championship rounds are the 13th, 14th, and 15th round. Uh, he'll train for 20 or 25 rounds. That's how that's how we roll. That's what we do. They're trying to exceed everything everybody else is doing. Trying to outwork everything everybody else is doing. This ain't one size fits all up around here, folks. I mean, it's just not. 
We're not all-knowing boxing gods up in here either. We make mistakes. A lot of our technique is not perfect, but uh, and that we need to perfect. But a lot of things we do are not meant to look decent to you. We're using leverages and movements like you've never been taught, you've never seen. Well, yeah, you've seen if you watch Mike Tyson or Sonny Liston bend at the waist, uh, Floyd Patterson, uh, folks like that, uh, even Jack Dempsey. We're working on uh, gazelle punching. Well, what the fuck is that? Well, go look at Floyd Patterson. Well, I mean, we're working on a lot of things. You come shoulder rolling around up us and you're going to get a dislocated shoulder. You won't keep rolling it. You might start out rolling it. This ain't play stuff here. This is not uh, Floyd Mayweather putting up a documentary. Well, I've got a special dietist over here. I've got an ophthalmologist over here for my eyesight. Uh, uh, I've got a proctologist here to, for my asshole because I'm an asshole. No, none of that. We're doing what everybody knows works and has worked in the past. It's for you to go on to learn the latest fads of what somebody thinks is right today. That's That, that would be for you. See? I've almost got Joe on a full-fledged carnivore diet, uh, but I'm mixing the vegetables and things in there too. Uh, I, I, I don't want to stun his growth in any way. Not holding him down. Not putting weight on his back and running him four miles so he don't grow taller. And that wasn't true about Mike Tyson anyway. Custy Amato never did that. They wanted him to get taller. That's a lie. It's embellishment. It's boxing embellishment. So I just want to... Uh, let you folks know that watch my rants and stuff. Uh, boxing's going in the wrong direction. Everything's defensive oriented. Uh, 30-ish year old trainers today, they watch somebody fight and watch somebody plowing through everybody. And they sit back and say, oh, this guy's going to get knocked out because he's not doing this thing or this thing here. Really? Snooze to my old ass. Snooze to me. Because uh, I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. Uh, got some good guys coming on. Uh, I, I forgot to mention uh, Kirk, who is in Florida, that we watch. He's working on building the strength of his punches and other things he needs to work on. There's no quitting him. He, he uh, lost fight the other day. Right? It's amateurs. You, you're going to lose. You are simply going to lose in the amateurs. I'm not sure. I'm unaware of people that had undefeated records in the amateurs. but uh, And if they did, it'd be suspect because the judging sucks. You know? It just literally does. That's why I tell Joe, you don't rely on no judges. Get your ass in there and knock this guy out. And let's go home. That's what it's all about. It's what we do. We're, we're, we're not Muhammad Ali here. We're more like Dempsey Liston or Tyson or I could name 10 other guys off that list. Uh, Patterson. Marciana, we're just doing things different than everybody's doing them today, right? It'll either work or it won't work. Uh, I happen to know full well 100% with every conviction in my body, it, it will work because it's always worked in the past. But yet everybody's over here looking in a, a left field over here, trying to find something new, doing something different. But a kid can't punch, teach him to get the hell out of the way all the time. Uh, it looks like nobody can punch. And the people that do punch won't throw the punches. People aren't really fighting no more. I mean, and it, I mean, there's, we have, 
we have some good fights today, but this, they're the rare exception. The rare exception. Uh, I like Canelo's uh, style, for example. At least he'll fight. Uh, but uh, there ain't nothing special about that. He gets in there and lets his hands go. Somebody going to sit around and lose three rounds thinking that they're going to uh, pivot to the left when this guy's left drops and pop him with the right. Now, they give up three rounds for that. And then if that right don't come, what do you do? Yeah. See, that's Wilder, one-dimensional. That's a hell of one of the worst champions, WBC champions ever. Guy sits and gets in there and just waits, waits till he can throw that right. It's exciting sometimes, but when the right doesn't connect, it's not very exciting at all. And when it don't connect, he loses. Got to know a bunch of different things. You know, he's he's got people working with him that are yes men. Even this guy that's working with him now today, Mark Breland was yet, didn't yes to him. He's gone. This guy today, this Malik Scott, he you know pats himself on the back constantly. How great of a trainer he is! And no doubt he's a good he's a good tra be a good trainer. But we don't know yet if he's a good trainer. Don't know nothing about him. He's a former fighter that Wilder beat. Everybody sent down, oh, oh, praise to the, uh, you know, man's got to learn how to throw a left. Man's got to learn how to move around. Man's got to learn how to slip punches. Man's got a lot of stuff to learn. Maybe he will be a great champion. But he ain't today. Who did he fight? See, and I could, I just pulled a name out of the hat there. I'm not picking on Wilder. I'm not trying to pick on him. But I'm not seeing all this greatness. He's just got a right hand. If if he can connect it two or three times, he wins. Sometimes he connects it once, he wins. There ain't nothing great about that. It's been going on since time immemorial. But these other guys that relied on that right hand, they could use their left too. They moved around the ring. They threw combinations. This guy just steps back with a with a right hand. There ain't nothing good or great about that. So we're doing things a little bit different than everybody that you've seen. And uh, unless you've looked back in yesteryear, and uh, that's what we do. And, uh, and we're going to continue to do so. And we love everybody. No offense to nobody, but I'm not going to sit here and uh, Put candy sprinkles on and on a bowl of ice cream and hand it to you so you'll be content. I'm not going to do it. Boxing is awful right now. It's the truth. It's awful. Ain't no good uh, out of sight champions. None of them. Even Tyson Fury. I mean, he's a big giant. He gets hit, goes down, gets right back up. You'd think a miracle has happened. Uh, I saw... Larry Holmes do that four or five times. Be knocked cold and get up and win. It's nothing new. Nothing new about that. But I'll give it to Fury. He's he's the best heavyweight. I don't care what anybody says. And he's going to beat that little Ukrainian guy senseless. Because that guy don't know how to hit. He dances around and wins on points. And that's okay. That's a good part of boxing too. So it's good to watch him, but uh, he ain't going to beat Tyson Fury. So here I went on another rant, hoping everybody will watch this because we're trying to build some minutes, but that's not what I'm making long videos about. I've done it since the start because I just go from one thing on to another and into another trying to say what's on my mind. I'm an old man. Uh, I don't like what I'm seeing out of out of 30-ish, the 30-ish crowd, even into the 40-ish crowd. I do like what I'm seeing of the younger kids that are coming up, though. So I think the computer's fixing to skip a beat on this battery. So I want to tell everybody God bless you, and I hope you have 
uh, a great rest of your Sunday, and I hope the week coming up is a good week for you.